with y'all this is jeremiah mcpherson hallelujah Josh come right back at you this is an intro for mortal kombat training day 300 so we made it to the 300 mark that's real cool feeling um happy i stuck to my disciplines and everything that i stick to so let's get straight into it we got 1825 days of simple disciplines 1825 days of studying 1825 days of building myself teaching myself how to think 1825 days of my disciplines giving me confidence 1825 days of keeping the mind sharp because it is a weapon 1825 days of bringing more value to the job than they're paying me for 1825 days of looking forward to my planned future not negative things in my past 1825 days of boxing 1825 days of doing porn 1825 days of tracking my calories 1825 days of working out <clears throat> 1825 days of going to work and 1825 days of consistently working 1825 days of mongo mentality 1825 days of working on my strategy 1825 days of reading listening to audiobooks 1825 days of journaling 1825 days of recording content 1825 days of sticking to my values 1825 days of staying so icy on these bitches and 1825 days of keeping it pimping we got a few things that I'm grateful for. I'm grateful to have an opportunity to upload so much free porn. I'm grateful to show all my, all I can accomplish and become uploading so much free porn. I'm grateful people see how disciplined I am, how much work I put in, and um, how thuggish I am. Plan 5150, I love putting in work and expressing who I am. With that being said, fuck April Jones, fuck Ben. Fuck Bambi, fuck Stephanie Santiago, fuck LeBron, fuck Drea, fuck Puffy, fuck Dr. Dre, fuck Jay-Z, fuck Beyonce, fuck Kanye West, fuck Tiger, fuck Sauce Walker, fuck Kim Kardashian, fuck The Game, fuck Wes Watson, fuck Eric Thompson, fuck Floyd Mayweather, fuck uh, 50 Cent, fuck C.T. Fletcher, fuck The Hawk, fuck Rihanna, fuck Anthony Gallo, fuck Paul Xavier, fuck The White Boy Neighbor, The Two Bitches, fuck Cali Muscle, fuck Jocko, fuck 21 Savage, and fuck Meek Mills. So we're going to read a few quotes for today. And, um, yeah, let's get a few quotes read. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones right here. Chinese proverb, Proverbs, talk, don't cook rice. And let's get a few more. This is from Nikki o. Machiavelli. Signs, a sign of intelligence is an awareness of one's own ignorance. Uh, let's see one more. Uh, this is from Carl Jung. Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life, and it will, and you will call it faith, fate. Fate. So it says, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. And this is from Frederick Nietzsche. No price is too high to pay for the privilege of owning oneself, owning yourself. Um, something was on my mind just a second ago. Was, um, we will not be like, uh, fuck Bambi, fuck Stephanie Santiago. And people think that it's just a, um, a mood or... Or because I, I I play Fifty Cent music every once in a while for the circumstances and situations that I come across, but it's more so a lifestyle. A lot of people don't come from where I come from. They have the privilege to come from the struggles that I went through, so they don't understand the life, the lifestyle, or how I do stuff. Once you get that gut feeling, so to remind the world and remind myself and to remind uh, Fifty Cent to remind Stephanie Santiago or or Dre, it's still fuck you. No matter how I come off, it's just that um, I got love for humanity. So um, I can be pushed into the corner until you just hope a motherfucker kill themselves. I'm not going to act like I'm not. I'm too above that. But for, for most of the time when I'm not pushed into the corner, even my enemies, I want to see them learn, do the right thing, become a better person, and hopefully have an understanding from where I'm coming from. But... For them not to understand where I'm coming from, and I'm coming from where I'm coming from, when I talk about sticking to my values every day, it wasn't, my values wasn't a miscalculation. It's something that I thought about for a long time for the way the world is. 
So if it comes to my values or the next motherfuckers, fuck you. And that goes for like Wes Watson and the Hawk. Because Wes Watson, he's the bodybuilder. The Hawk is like a big motherfucker, one of the strongest people in the world. And if it comes down to us catching a fade, I'd rather catch that fade and take him off my fuck you list. And if it still goes, I'll catch the fade again. And we're going to keep going and going and going and going until he understands where I'm coming from. I'm writing, I'm working out these Mortal Kombat's is just so I can knock the shit out of them. Straight up. And that's where I'm coming from. So this is Jeremiah McPherson, Hallelujah Johnson, and I'm right back at y'all. Now when you come back, I want you to shoot out four 
get in the back. Then we're gonna squat footwork. We're gonna get in the squat. We're gonna do footwork. Stand in the squat position. We're gonna burn these legs out. We only got two sets that way. Guys, we don't like to bend their legs. We don't bend our legs. Sometimes I don't like to bend my legs. So I gotta do exercise like this to bend my legs. Alright? Fight the stand. Nice and relaxed. Kind of twist. Four. 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 Turn in that rear foot. Practice that. That's all we're doing. Turn that rear. Turn that rear. Turn that rear. Turn that rear.
it up now, y'all. Y'all know what it is. Try to give it 20 punches. Make it hard. Don't go fast. Don't go smooth. I want you to see for sure. I want you to hit them hard. Two, three, four, one, one. All hard. Ready? Let's go out, y'all. This, 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 this.
but I do make them more enticing. They're not naked, but they're they're nude. I just said that they're not nude. They're not naked, but they're very pushing the edge. They're edgy, right? I post one in the morning on TikTok, and I post one on night. Just or on Twitter, just like I do on TikTok. When you post your photo, you're gonna to wanna to drop your OnlyFans link under your photo on Twitter. Twitter's pretty easy. I don't have that much experience with Twitter. I would say maybe a quarter of all of my subscribers come from Twitter. So Instagram and TikTok definitely take the big, the big uh, audience on that. And the last one is Clapper. Clapper you're gonna post twice a day, just like TikTok. It's the same thing. Use your TikTok, remove the watermark, post once in the morning on Clapper, or post once in the evening on Clapper. Clapper is not as much of a used site as TikTok, obviously, but I have gotten some subscribers from only or from Clapper on OnlyFans. And if you're already making, you know, your TikToks, why not just take a TikTok, remove the watermark, and repost it on a different platform that has a different audience? Okay. So that is the basic. If you guys like my videos, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so I can continue to make these videos for you and give you more of my knowledge throughout my journey on OnlyFans and hopefully help you get started on yours. If you want extra help besides my YouTube videos, my referral link is on my Instagram, the bio is in the description below. You guys can just click that, create your account with the link and I will be happy to help you in whatever you need. You can ask me questions, I will be here for you. Today in this video, we'll talk about my background, how to promote your page, how to stay more private, taxes. Oh, my background, I was a nanny. I nanny for three or four years after college, wasn't making any money, obviously. I was so poor, I would go to the grocery store every week and I would meal prep for the week because I didn't even have time to cook during the week. And I would buy the same food every single week because I knew how much it was going to be and I knew I could afford it. It's weird talking about this now because I have so much financial freedom. I just wanted to buy food. I just wanted to be able to eat. I really just use my money the same, but I'll go to the grocery store and I'll, I'll buy chips now because I can. The OnlyFans has given me a lot of financial freedom. I'm so, so grateful. It's really changed my life. You know, I don't wake up stressed about money. And it just depends on what you're looking for. Are you looking to put a down payment on a house? Are you looking to make this your income, your living? Like you can live off of this. If you really do a lot of research and just put a lot of time and effort into it, it's not easy. I'm not sure where that idea came from. Getting started is not easy. Get that out of your head because it does take work, but as long as you're willing to put the work in, you will see a lot of reward, I promise, and I'll show you how much I made throughout this video. So I do stay like slightly anonymous on my page. If I don't have anything covering like good parts, I don't have my face in it. I'll do like hair down or even just neck down. Whatever you feel comfortable with is what you do. But there is a stigma around OnlyFans. I don't know why because every single person has a body. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I just keep it face down in case I don't want people finding out. Or if people find out, they won't see my face in that portion. How to start your page with zero home. You're going to start by making new accounts for all of your social media. Gross and net are two different things. OnlyFans takes 20% of all creators just because we get to use their website, we get to use their platform, they do all the credit card handling, any complaints they deal with. There's gross, which is how much you really made. Well, there's gross, which is how much you made. And there's net, which is how much you really made. Gross is before OnlyFans cut. My gross pay so far this year, there's still six weeks left, so something crazy to happen. But so far this year, my gross pay on my paid page is $65,289. That's insane because I've never even made that much in my life. So, uh, but after only fans takes are cut, my net pay, my net pay is $52,295. That's on my paid page. So if I only had one page, that would be so far this year how much I made just for that. And honestly, after I got it started, I don't do a lot. I get my pictures up each week and that's it. Getting started was the hardest part, <laughs> for sure. So don't give up on it. Just don't give up on it. I promise it's worth it and it works. Unless you really feel like this isn't for you and you're not gonna have fun with it and whatever, 
and don't do it, but I feel good sometimes when I take a picture and people comment, oh, I love this. It makes you feel good about yourself, but it's not for everyone, so it might not be for you. So really think about that before you dive into this. On my free page, it's less. I just started my free page so halfway through the year. I have gross for only fans cut on my free page, $29,811. And net on my free page, $23,849. So that's after only fans took their cut. As you can see, this is my paid page. I net $52,294. And then you'll see my free page, and you'll see I net $23,849 so far for this year. My net total after only gets to their cut for my paid and free page put together, I've made so far this year, is $76,144. That is honestly insane. I have just been sitting in my house. I just do things in my house. I haven't even left and I don't even need my car. Well, that's crazy. But I really want you to know you can do this. You can. Everyone can do this. I made less than $100 my first month. So all of this is when I figured out how to work it. And it was like, by that time, it was like May or June. So it took me five months. I up in the morning and I'll go on my page and I'm just, it's just like, this person tipped you, this person tipped you. I was sleeping and I made money. What is happening right now? This is crazy. I was starting with the pay page, but obviously it's up to you. Also, when I started, I got obsessed. Financial freedom is my top priority. That's all I want in life. I don't want to sit here stressing about the end of the month. I did a ton of research. Every single morning, for probably a month, I would just walk my dog and listen with my earphones in to OnlyFans and just talk about YouTube. I would just type in YouTube OnlyFans and watch every single video. I think I've watched every YouTube video on OnlyFans. That's really what helped me get to where I am, is listening to those creators. And then I had a lot of stuff I did on my own too, because I haven't heard a lot of creators talk about having two pages. As you can see that, Almost double my income. It has made my income way, way higher, 30 grand higher than it would have been just with one page. But do your research, write things down, get nitty gritty. It's a business. I know it doesn't seem like one, but it really is. And you can be successful. I believe in you. I know you can do it because I did it. And now you can do it. If you use my referral link, it's in the description below. It's on my Instagram in the description below. To create your account, I will talk to you. I'll send you the document. And we can chat, chit chat, start a community together. I'm here for you. Thanks for watching. And I hope to hear from you guys soon. And good luck on your journeys. Bye.
don't want to hear but is honestly the best advice I can give to anyone who wants to start and grow an OnlyFans and actually do it as a full-time career. You truly have to put in the amount of time you would into a full-time job. You have to realize that this is not a get-rich-quick scheme. You know, in the beginning of OnlyFans, I think it was a lot easier for girls to just right off the bat make a lot of money. But in today's age, there are a lot of creators on the platform. And I got a comment recently where someone said, you know, girls aren't actually making a lot of money on OnlyFans. And, you know, I forget what the comment said. It said something like that. Like, it's a scam. It is not a scam if you put that I know that you can only post as much karma as you have or something like that so you kind of have to build yourself up on reddit and that might take a lot of time so be careful where you put your energy into and just be smart about it next thing is snapchat and YouTube I know a lot of people will use like tinder or something and people will ask oh what's your snap and then you send them to snap and then they kind of use that as a marketing tool to then get them to OnlyFans. If you already have a following on Snapchat, then I would highly recommend using that. But for me, I do not have a Snapchat, so it is not 100% recommended by me. I would say if you don't already use Snapchat, I don't know if making one is going to be helpful unless you actually do the Tinder marketing method, which I've heard is really, really good. And basically what that means is you make a Tinder profile, speak with guys, put the ages to like all ages or something like that, speak with guys, and then they'll ask, oh, what's for Snap? Or you can like be like, oh, do you want my Snap? Let's talk over there. You give them your Snap, you message over there, and then you post on your story like, oh, I have an OnlyFans. You can build up your following that way. So now let's get into what I was talking about with eyes. Eyes on the prize, guys. The more eyes, the more opportunity for a new subscriber and more money. This next method is controversial marketing. And controversial marketing um, is kind of making things a little more aggravating to the viewer so that more eyes are being drawn to your content. Either way, this is all about social media. So you're going to be posting content as often as possible on everything guys like you should be posting every single day on all platforms you know trying different techniques out but something that has been working for a lot of people is this controversial marketing method where there are ways to add curiosity to um figuring out what your only fans is you could market yourself as a no face on social media but on only fans you do show your face so it kind of gives people like oh i wonder what this person looks like and you do all your content with no face or if you do show your face there's other ways to add curiosity showing your silhouette in all your videos but never showing your full body or whatever it is you can add curiosity in many many different ways so curiosity marketing is another way that you can try and stem things. The last thing I want to mention is live streaming and there are so many different platforms that you can live stream on. And you can also do live streaming on like cam girl sites as well to market your OnlyFans if that's something that you're comfortable with and want to do, that is a great way. You can live stream anywhere, like on TikTok, on Instagram, on um, Twitch, literally so many places. You can also do a YouTube. And I forgot to mention, you can also make YouTube videos where you do try on bikini hauls and things like that that can actually gain traction to your YouTube page and then also to your OnlyFans. You can do things like that. But back to live streaming. Um, live streaming is a great way to get new eyes to you. Most platforms are not NSFW. On live streaming, you do have to be you know, covered and all that unless you're doing a cam girl type thing. But for the most part, you do have to be covered and you can't really reference the OnlyFans. You can definitely make it known that you have one in many different ways, so get creative. One thing I want to mention is how to grow and literally everything if you need that. But also in that course, if you do purchase that online course, you also get access to me. So you get my Telegram at and we can message and DM and set up phone calls and really dive into what it is that you need um, and what type of help you need to grow and build your own hands. So that is all linked down below and I will see you in the next one. Bye.
video. If you're new here, I'm Alana. I talk all about S work and my life and my journey. And today we're gonna get into one of my most popular videos and just do a reaction to it because it has been a couple of years since I started my journey in this in the adult industry and so i wanted to see if some of these tips are still relevant let's jump into it all right so the video i wanted to react to is this one it is called 10 things you need to know before starting OnlyFans," and i made this uh two years ago it says it has 315k views at the time that i'm watching it right now and it's basically all of my tips on what I think you should know before you actually get into the industry and you start an OnlyFans. But I think this goes, you know, not just OnlyFans, but any sort of like S work platform. So let's let's see what I was talking about. Let's see. Hello. Welcome to my new apartment, by the way. I'm planning to have the motivation and the drive to like get up in the morning and do your work. But that is all stuff that can be taught through like books and videos online and stuff. And not a lot of people talk about like the adult industry and actually how to be okay within yourself, like your mental health and taking care of you. So I still stand by that. I think that's really important. And I'm glad that I mentioned not just like tips on how to be successful on the platform, but tips on how to like take care of yourself as well. A pretty intense one already right off the bat. Your body is going to need a break. When I started out doing my OnlyFans, I was just taking quick bikini photos in my mirror and it wasn't it wasn't taxing on my body. But now a year into it, I'm doing a lot more things. I'll just be real with you guys. I definitely do like not I'm not f***ing anybody, but you know, I'm doing some soft I take all of my content in one day for the week. Mm. So every week there's one day out of the week that I just go ham, you know what I mean? Like literally ham. Sometimes my body is over it. And by the end of the day and for the rest of that week, I am so beyond over the stress I put my body through and the amount of work that I put my body through. And it's not as pleasurable by the end of it. And so that's something I wish I would have known when I started doing that type of content is that I do need to kind of spread it out and it can't be all done in one day. I'm only recently learning this about myself. Up until this point, I was just doing it, you know, just this way where I do it once a week, maybe twice a week. But I realized my body just needs a break sometimes and that I can't force my body to want something that it doesn't want. That's just something I wish I knew going into it. And now that I know it, I'm able to take my time with it see those in my daily life, you will be surprised in the beginning of the type of people that are going to show up on your Instagram, that are going to message you and text you a little more and, you know, show a little more interest in you. Um, you're going to start to see those things and it just becomes a lot more apparent. Now, you know, almost four years in, I can really manage that. But I think in the beginning, I was, it would stress me out to see or to find out that someone I know was looking at my content. Now I'm like, mm, yeah, we've all seen it. Now it's just part of my life. But in the beginning, it was something I think you should know. People are going to see this. People are going to be curious or horny. I don't know. That's why I said that in the beginning of this. Literally friends are on my OnlyFans. Luckily, I'm the person that 